see. All right, let's try it out. Which compass do you want? Orange. Orange. All right, middle. All right, so it's urease production. So I think they were trying to get at that pylori thing, helicopylori, urease uh, production bacteria. And so they're just trying to get you thinking about what what is the cause of, of duodenal ulcer, which I think you did really well. You, you, you were absolutely right. Even after immediately reading it, you got it. You got the right diagnosis. Um, but there, you want to remember on step one that they're positive urease, oxidase positive, catalase positive. I really recommend doing um, sketchy micro uh, for, for uh, all of your microbes. Um, but thank you so much. That was a good job. Thank you. Um, so who, who's, who's next for Winda? Muneev. All right, Muneev, are you ready? Yep. All right, let's do it. Okay. 61-year-old male, uh, 61-year-old man possesses his primary care physician for follow-up after lab testing revealed that his hemoglobin A1C was 7.6%. Uh, he had previously tried to start a diet and exercise program, but his blood glucose control has been suddenly worse over time. After discussing options, the patient agrees to start the first line of medication for disease in addition to maintaining his diet and exercise program. Which of the following comorbidities would increase the risk of toxicity with this drug? Right. So I'm assuming they're going to get metformin? Yeah, because this, one of the things is his age, right? Yeah. So he's 61, so it's adult onset, so you know it's step, it's probably type 2. Yeah. Well, and also A1C, uh, another thing with A1C, what would the baseline with A1C be? So it depends on whether you're asked, so like, I'm being technical, but, but this is raised. But you want it to be like around 4, and so, and so if, you, if you had diabetes, you want it to be around where it is. But this is diagnostic for diabetes. And the way to think about it is you have non-enzymatic glycosylation of the right, red blood cells. So it's an average glycemic control measure. So you know he's not taking his diabetic medications or they aren't working if your HbA1c is 7.6 because it's an average over the last 90 days, which is the lifespan of a red blood cell. Mm -hmm. So now basically we're trying to, we're trying to see if uh, what would metformin have a side effect to? Right. In a way, um, I could rule out C, because um, I don't think it would be positive to human disease. Um, I want to rule out D as well. I actually, wait. I want to rule out B. I would rather keep C, because I don't know if I'll probably use that as anything to do with Foreman. Uh, um, I'll actually go with C. C, all right. So how, are, how, are, how did you get there? Yeah, so you, you have all of the things that are bad about diabetes have to do with lots of glucose in your blood. And the reason that you have lots of glucose in your blood is, is one of two reasons. In type 1, it's because you destroy the beta islet cells, which are producing insulin. And then in type 2, it's because your resistance to insulin, you have, you have increased insulin resistance, which is to say that no matter how much insulin you have, your reaction to it's going to be diminished. And in type 2, that's, the that's what's happening, is you're getting a resistance to insulin reaction. So, so what you wind up happening is um, your increased glucose from insulin resistance causes non-enzymatic glycosylation of the parenchyma of the kidney in the glomeruli. And it, ca it causes those... Um, those uh, those nodules that you see on um, electron microscope um, and and they're like pink kind of circles that you see and so um, so polycystic kidney disease is a genetic disorder that does not involve glucose in its pathophysiology so one of the things that I would use is pathoma pathoma is a really good resource for kidney disorders and they do an excellent job at explaining polycystic kidney disease but um, it does involve the kidneys, but the damage to the kidneys has to do with microvasculature and it has to do with glucose damaging the kidneys. Mm. So, uh, 
So I think you're on the right track for diagnosis immediately, which is great. But we're thinking about what, if we think it's metformin, what, does, what are the toxicities of metformin? Irritable bowel syndrome head is more like a psychological disorder. So I, I, I'm, be, I'm beating you up because I think you can take it. Because I, I think you got the right diagnosis. And, um, and I don't, don't think that I'm picking on you because we're, we're just going no, through it. I'm enjoying that. Oh, good. Okay. All right. Good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All I, right. I enjoy competition. So as long yeah. as I'm like, learning. So yeah. Exactly. That's, that's the idea. Is I think it's more helpful if I, like, if I like probe what, what, where you're coming from. And yeah, so... I want to rule out... So one of the things to think about is metformin causes damage to your kidneys and your liver. Could be so. We'll just choose an answer. We'll, we'll. Uh, let, what confidence do you want, and which answer do you want? We'll, we'll talk about it. Um. Okay. Right, I'll, I'll go with. I'll go with. Uh, I'll go with D. Congestive heart failure. All right. And my neutral. I'll be neutral with yellow. All right. Let's do it. So let's look at the answer here. Holly said, "Oh, I talked you out of the right answer. That's the worst situation." Um. Uh, so I you. That's what I, I, yeah, so classic for metformin toxicity is lactic acidosis. You also get hepatotoxicity, so I'm really interested in why this is not true. I actually disagree with it. Increased risk of toxic sulfonylurea is caused by prominent side effect. So I think they're focusing on something really nice, which is the, the drug class disulfiram-like reaction in response to alcohol from sulfonylurea, um, which is a rare association, but is, is definitely exists. But you also, for metformin, you also have hepatotoxicity is a very real concern. And so if you had chronic alcohol use, it, it definitely wouldn't help. But, um, but I think the most important thing to remember is metformin is lactic acidosis producing. And so anything that would cause your kidneys to be more susceptible uh, to metformin's effects on your kidneys, which is renally excreted, um, um, would predispose you to lactic acidosis. Um, the mechanisms of that are kind of complicated, but, um, and it's not, I don't think you necessarily need to know why metformin causes lactic acidosis so much as you need to know that if you have a low GFR, or anything that can lower your GFR can give you metformin symptoms, uh, adverse effects, especially lactic acidosis. Um, does that make sense? Because the renal, renal clearance of the drug is affected. Okay. Well, also, Adam, I had a quick question. Maybe this might be a yeah. topic, but, uh, if you are like in the basis of Yeah, yeah, we're that's definitely coming. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was just wondering because be, and I, I noticed. Totally agree with you. I totally agree. I, I want, I want, I also want the figures to show up in a certain color so I can see them. I want to be able to find everything really easily. So. I, I noticed once the answers are picked, uh, the options like switch order as well. Yeah, yeah. So they randomize so that when you see it again, you'll you'll see a different order. So, um, so uh, we need to we need to try to coordinate it so that these things, it's, it's a little complicated because these things need to correspond to what this is, but still randomize. So it's a little yeah, more okay. tricky. I, just, I figured I'd say, yeah. I don't know how hard or easy that is, I just thought I'd say that. No, not at all. Thank, thanks for, thanks for uh, participating and in, in getting into um, these questions with us. Sorry, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Like, I don't that, like, why is it possibly kidney disease? Just because, like, isn't that, like, genetic? So, like, why would metformin cause kidney disease? Yeah, like, so the best way to think about it is not that um, diabetes is causing polycystic kidney disease. It's that the increased risk of toxicity. So what's happening is PKD is... So because it, he already has a renal issue. Yeah, so if you had a renal issue, you, your GFR would go down. And if your GFR goes down, then your risk of lactic acidosis goes up because your, your renal clearance goes down. Okay, got it, thanks. 
Yeah, yeah. No, thank you. Thank you for asking questions. If you, if you have a question, 10 people have a question. So, um, so Rowenda, who do we, who do we have next? Yes. Um, yeah, let's go back to Saida. All right. Saida? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, let's do it. If you want to read, we can. Hey, um, uh, an 80 years old man reported an intensely suffering by ambulance with a two hour history of increased difficulty breathing at home. His wife says that over the last day he started uh, having more flavor production and trying to convert. He started gasping for years this morning and quit to uh, this point his family became concerned and called 911. Star Tribune reviewed the previous MI uh, four years ago and came to repeat the 30 pack years is just smoking as well as 40 industry of all the CPR. Physical exams are really decreased breakdown with pain, bilateral breathing, and non tendon entering this 45 degrees outdoor body elevation. Despite treatment, the patient passes away, this was a common side to the same in postpartum and some issues with the lung. Yeah, so what are you thinking? You what? Okay, so the patient is basically, um, it's related to pulmonology, right? So, platinum is one of the breath and also the history of smoking. I think I would go with uh, either it's um, anthocyanin. So it, if it was emphysema, which of these answer choices would correspond to it? Uh, yeah, it would be like either E, central, or pancreas. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I think D is a representative for emphysema. Um. And yeah. So you could you could mucus gland proliferation might be bronchitis. Or emphysema. Yeah. Yeah. So it's D, I think, or maybe B also. So what is the significance of the shipyard? Mm -hmm. I think shortness of breath, maybe. Like, he's working in a shipyard, so maybe he's gasping shortness of breath. So one of the things that you can get in a shipyard is asbestosis. So that's a huge, what is it, which of these answer choices would correspond to asbestosis? Um, asbestosis, I think it, it will be B. So B would be like heart failure. So what you get with heart failure is you get backed up blood into your lungs, and then you have these macrophages which take on the, the constituent parts of the red blood cells that die as a result, and it's, it's called hemosiderin. And so they wind up being called heart failure cells because the macrophages are eating the hemosiderin and turning red. And so they will show you an imaging where they show macrophages with red, red inside them. And that, is, that red is the iron from your heme groups called hemosiderin. Um, so that would be like heart failure. Mm -hmm. But for ferruginous bodies are like dumbbell shaped um, pieces of asbestos in your body. And so the macrophages will usually pick them up and they can't digest them. And so they will cause kind of an interstitial lung disease. And you, so shipyard is like a buzzword for asbestos. So I want you, every time you see shipyard, I want you to be like, if, this, if, if the answer choice doesn't include ferruginous bodies or asbestos, then I need a really good second option because the fact that they went with shipyard as a description is very specific. So they're either trying to get me to choose the wrong answer choice that is asbestos related, or they're giving me asbestosis as the diagnosis. So that's a really good one. Um, so what do you, wh which, which do you think we're, uh, we're thinking? So then for me, I think, all right, all right. So what, what confidence?
points are you taking? led you astray. It was emphysema. That would be bronchitis. Okay, so this is the second time. Obstructive disease, central lobular air dilation, mucus gland proliferation. So let's see why. So it is true that that answer choice corresponds to um, asbestosis, right? Carogenous bodies. But um, this disease cannot, does not present with dyspnea. However, it typically presents with restricted pattern features of crackles and no wheeze. So you would not expect a wheeze with a restricted pattern. So what happens with asbestosis is you get distributed asbestos and you get a restricted pattern because the lung is no longer able to inflate uh, as well. And so you're not able to inspire as easily. And so you'd have on your, on your pulmonary function testing, you'd have a restricted pattern. Um, but you, would, you could have dyspnea, but you wouldn't have crackles, which is like, uh, uh, you would have um, wheeze, which is uh, characteristic of COPD, asthma or, or emphysema or um, bronchitis. Okay, so that's my bad. I talked to you out of, out of some good ideas here with pan signer or uh, potentially choosing central ovular. So I'm going to take the bullet on that one. That was my bad. Um, <laughs> um, but thank you for thank you for answering questions and uh, going through it with us. Um, so emphysema is patients with pink puffers and chronic bronchitis will be blue bloaters. Um, so you have cyanosis and productive cough. Um, yeah, so they're just giving you some facts about it. Um, yeah, so you would see this on. Uh, so I just want to make sure that the panty signer, panty signer, I think has to do with if you had an alpha one antitrypsin deficiency, which would be a lot younger than 82. So you can rule that out. Panty signer is never the case at 82 because uh, they just don't live that long. That's the emphysema that is genetic. All right, so we might do one more question here. If that's all right. Rowena, do we have one? We're dying. Yeah, let's go back to Shireen. All right, Shireen, we gotta kill this spider. Yeah, let's do it. An orthopedic surgeon will be satisfied with the relatively high infection rate in patients with open traumatic fractures at her hospital. She decides to research her best practices from other hospitals in order to determine which interventions may be effective in decreasing infectious problems. Upon yeah. review medical journals, she is able to locate hundreds of articles reporting outcomes from open fractures, which the following types of references would most be valuable for a guiding change in her clinical practice. Okay, so she goes So she's like taking other testings from other journals. So I'm going to take off C, D. B. Um, I forgot what meta-analysis was. Meta-analysis is like a bunch of different like studies, and then you I'm look you look at all the studies and you try to decide something is true about all of them. Okay, so it's E. E. E is meta-analysis, right? Upon review of medical journals, she is able to locate hundreds of articles reporting outcomes from open fractures, which the following types of references for most valuable and guidance change. So I think. Ask like, what would case series be again? So case series um, is similar to case control, except it's done over a, an extended period of time, and they actually switch the the condition, the the intervention group and the control group. So like you have a like a period A where you're going to do like a case control study then, but then your control group switch, and so you get to see whether or not part of the reason that you're getting your findings are to do with the fact that you chose specific people for a certain uh, uh, selection in terms of groups. So like your control group might be taller than your conditional group. And so you want to switch them over, over a period of time so that you can determine whether or not your selection for your groups is, is 
uh, effective enough for the thing that you're trying to find out. Um, so case control studies, you're looking at, you're choosing like people with the condition and people without the condition, and then you're going back in time and you're looking at reviews that would tell you that there were risk factors in place in the past that led to their condition. That's what a case control study would be. And then a randomized control trial, you'd actually do the intervention yourself. So you're not determining which intervention, you're like doing the intervention in a randomized control study. All right, so what confidence are you thinking? Yellow. Yellow, all right, let's do it. I'm gonna go to green. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna totally under, no, I'll do, I'll do yellow. Yeah, I think you did pretty well there. Um, you could rule out the other answer choice. So we're gonna have to kick him away because we're, we're in archery and we can't, we can't hit him otherwise. And then we will shoot him. And uh, I'm gonna shoot him again. And now we have a dead spider and we have, this is very morbid, and dead snake, right? So you can search the snake, and you can search the spider. Oh, he gave us a, he has a helmet, this spider has a helmet. And we can eat him eventually, we can eat, we won't be able to eat these characters, but we will be able to eat some characters. And then you can go to st the stairs, or so to speak, and move on to the next stage, it'll tell you how well we did. Uh, and then you move on to the next stage, and you're supposed to survive as long as you can in terms of your ability to eat, and find water, and kill things, and, and not get damaged. And you can adjust the, all of this. So what we would do is we'd go back once we died, and we'd go to the game review, we'd go to game log, and we'd see our game here, which is group C, step one, January 2nd. Um, and we would go to this most recent question where we got it right. And eventually, very soon, we're going to have this option, where we go to summary review and we play a game where we review the questions that we got wrong. And it turns out we only have one of the review questions here, because we did step one. But there would be a series of boxes we try to fill in the blank. And that would be multiplayer as well. So remember we flagged that question, we have it here. And we can look at it and talk about it and think about it. That was a good answer. And um, so thank you so much for coming. I'm going to have to get somewhere for 2 o'clock my time. So that's, that's about all the time we have. And, and uh, as always, I try to mention that we have donations as an option and private tutoring as an option. So reach out to Rowenda if you'd like to do those things and use some of the links to donate. You never have to donate. We'll never resent you for not donating, but it definitely helps a lot. So uh, thank you so much for your time. And uh, I I'll, I'll, might even have a time this week if we can swing it, but uh, we'll definitely see you next week. All right. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Linda, if you get a chance. Bye.